what I'm also going to show you now is how to add a an arcade block game. So if you're not interested in adding arcade block games, you can stop the video now. If you are interested in adding one of those, then um, keep watching. So I'm just going to change this back to the previous way, so we know it's working. Now to add an arcade game, <coughs> if you remember back in the plugin provider there was a, an arcade plugin here. So we need to provide one of these, which is one of these. So we will create a new class. And it will be, it will be that class there and we will call it My test mod arcade plugin. And it's going to implement this interface. And we just go here and we've made explicit. No, it's not going to implement that. It's going to implement this one, sorry. Okay, so we should put that there. Let's just redo that. Now that we have the using Okay, so there's three methods here. One is to return the implement, the, re the renderer that the arcade block is going to use to draw the game. This is simply a string, so we're just going to return my test mod game. And this is the actual game logic game code here. So we're going to return my test mod arcade. Game. And this is going to be okay, render it. to add another class. The game itself, my test mod arcade game. And we can just copy that and paste it for a quicker add. And rename it to my test mod arcade renderer. And this is probably going to need those, and it's probably also going to need Microsoft. Dot framework graphics probably change that to renderer. Okay, so the plugin we provide the game, which is actually an arcade machine. So our game needs to implement that. I think that's uh, uh, it is abstract. So there's a couple of abstract methods there that need to be implemented. The 
these ones here. That can return false. We're not going to use that for this simple example. That can return true. I think that is that abstract. Yes, it is. Abstract is a virtual method which must be implemented by the subclass. That can do nothing, and that can do nothing for now. And then back on the renderer here, this is going to implement this interface. So we just do that. Right click, implement interface explicitly. So there's several methods here. Studio Forge Engine. We'll, do, we'll put that using up here so we don't have to fully reference these, fully qualify these types. Actually it's integration isn't it? So dot integration. And I like to put my drawer at the bottom. this is the main drawing code which will get executed by the game every frame to, to draw your game's graphics. We don't need to do anything there. We don't need to do anything here. And we don't need to do anything there. That's the initialization stuff. Just by the way, this, this here, the text is used um, on the by the game when you select when you when you select the arcade block to set the game that's the text that they will see that text there so that des that describes your game. I'll explain that sort of shortly. So that's the basic stuff we need. Um, we will. Just do a, a simple We'll just do a simple draw. So we can say call globals. Now uh, we need to do using studio.engine core globals is just a whole bunch of global variables that we can use. I think we can actually use maybe globals. No, we use core globals sprite batch. That's just a global sprite batch object we can use for drawing. Draw string. My test. Uh, the font, we can, again, we can use core labels game font. My test game. And we go to position, so we'll just say uh, so we need that using as well. Just these usings just mean you don't have to fully qualify the types down here. So I'll make it 100 comma 100 on the screen. And the color, we'll make it color white. Let's make it color green. And that's it. So the game will draw this text on the screen, on the arcade box screen when it's, in, when it's being played. like we also have to implement the constructor for the 
sacrifice class. So global point 3D is in the uh, block world assembly. So we need to do that using that's um, this one here. And we just call the base of those variables. part of the initialization. These references, these uh, regions I add might seem uh, superfluous at the moment because there's no code, but later as the game code increases they become very useful. So we can zip that code down to, we can fold it down to that, right? Okay, so we compile that. Okay, so we need to pass the game, the map, player, P. Let's put this using up here as well. Often you'll also want to pass the, the game to the renderer so the renderer knows what's going on. Uh, wait, no, we can't do that. We actually. Oh, we actually have it here, so we don't need it. Okay, so that compiles. Now if we copy our DLL again, run the game. Take an upper K block. Take some coins. We set the game here. hasn't uh, hasn't referenced so I need to check why oops uh, because we didn't implement this method on the plugin provider we need to, we need to pass our arcade plugin this one here in the actual provider. So here we just type a new my test mod arcade plugin. Simple as that. Should be good to go now. So 
this plugin provider is used for you, your mod, to tell the game to supply the game with each of the plugins that the game might need for your mod. So we have the general plugin for, gen for the general mod stuff and here we have one for the arcade game. Okay, so we run the game. Now when we set the game, still not there. Why is that? <coughs> I think I'm I've done something so I'm missing something still. Sorry about this. I haven't done this for a while. Um There's nothing on there. Uh, is there something on the main plugin? I'm just going to check another one. Defender, we have the plugin provider, which provides the OK plugin. we need to do that. So back here where we provide the renderer, we actually need to call its load content method as well, which is where it loads textures, etc. It's not strictly necessary for this example because we're not actually using it that method, but that's just to show you how to do it if you need to do it, which you probably will for a proper game. So that's fine there. Nothing and nothing missing there. There's nothing missing there. Missing there. Right, this is this is what I'm missing here. Um, <coughs> yeah, when you initialize the RK the mod, you need to tell the game because a mod, a single mod can support several arcade games so you need to register the, the arcade game with the mod here so that's in the
uh, in the main mod plug uh, initialization you need to just add this code so you you instantiate this type um, you set the arcade game machine ca arcade machine variable to how many games you're implementing in this case it's just one and then you register the enum counts with, to, the, to the manager here to this guy here it's also used to register several other things but for the, in this case we just need to register the game so we copy our freshly built DLL back into the mods folder that the game uses There you see my test mod arcade game. So now if the player selects that, this this arcade block is now using your game. So if you add credits, there's nothing to actually play. Uh, which I'm not sure why it should be a black screen, but I'll just. I'm just going to add attach a debugger just to find out what's going on there. It might be throwing an exception. Feels like it's throwing an exception. not throwing an exception. Okay. Okay, so the renderer let's just double check what this one's doing in the renderer. Oh, you need to actually clear the screen yourself. And I'll also show you how to get hold of a your own sprite batch and the font as well. So what we'll do is we'll just do what this guy's doing here. So just to get yourself set up um, with some basics, which every game's going to need. You're going to need a sprite batch and a font variable. So and in the load content method we just set those so that's a sprite batch safe object type and I think that one's just called font sprite font set these here from the core globals so now we just use these variables whenever we want to do stuff so we use that one there sprite pitch and that one there font um, and we also need to clear the screen ourselves so we do basically that We set the render target to our game's render target object. And we clear this clear the render clear the screen.
which is that screen's actually the render target, right? We need a reference to the game object, which we can get here. From here. Machine as our Okay, right. And just in case it is actually null, if the cast can't be done, then move this return, don't do anything. We also, to, to use the sprite batch, we also need to begin the sprite batch. Sprite batches work with a begin statement, then you use the sprite batch, then you issue an end statement to close the batch. It's actually, a, that's why it's called sprite batch, because it batches sprite drawers together. Do our do this do the drawing, and then we end the sprite batch. And it will draw that that batch, whatever's been batched up from our drawing. Just to prove that we are actually doing this clear, I'll change the color to. Uh, cornflower blue, which is like the standard XNA blue blue screen, light blue sky coloured screen. Let's run the game. Set the game to our game, and there it is. There's our test arcade game. So it's drawing, it's drawing that text. It's too big, it's off the screen. That's fine, we can fix that. We can just change that to say 10, and change that to so it says my test and then underneath it says, okay, so then that's a line break. So we'll actually draw like this. My we'll actually draw like that, right? We'll click up the spaces on space. It'll draw like that. And let's also have a just a ball bouncing around the screen. So we need um, we need a ball position. We need the Microsoft Framework DLL for things like vectors, etc. And ball velocity. When we start the game, we're going to set ball position equals 100. And we're going to set ball velocity vector 1 which will go, it'll move to the right and down, so it will go like that. Then in the update method, we simply add the ball velocity to the position, and we say if ball position x is less than or equal to zero, or ball position is greater than or equal to uh, the default
resolution, resolution I believe is three hundred and twenty, but you can that can actually be overridden, but I think that's what it is. Then we're just going to so if the ball hits the left edge or the right edge, we're going to negate the x velocity so it bounces back the other way. And we do the same with the y. I think it's 240. I'm going to draw it as 10 pixels. 10 pixels uh, radius, so we actually subtract 10 from there and subtract 10 from there. I'll make that clearer here, so we'll use so that's three twenty minus ball radius, right? Or two forty minus because this position is the center of the ball. And then in the rendering we draw the ball using sprite fetch, draw. We can just use core globals dot blank texture. Uh, the position game dot ball position. Did I not make those public? No, I didn't. These fields need to be public so the renderer can see them. It doesn't actually need to see velocity, so we can actually keep that private. Private variables I make camel case, public variables I make Pascal case. The renderer needs the radius. Change up ball position. Color white. Pass it the uh, a null because I'm not using source rect. No rotation. Actually, we can make it rotate. We'll make it rotate as well. And the origin, which is usually zero point five. not using any effects and layers usually zero. So we just need to add that field which we're just going to simply increment each frame so the ball will just spin on its own axis. And that should So we have a position, rotation, origins. Okay, I'm missing the scale. Scale is the ball radius. I think well, it might actually be the diameter.
There we go. I'll just, just for the prosperity, I'll just fix that collision. So it should be less than equal to ball radius. And in the drawing we will just increment that to, let's say, 60. So it's more in the centre. And there you have it. That's how you make your own game. Easy peasy. That ball's disappeared. So the way to fix that is stuff here probably needs to be done hmm. Alright, so that hopefully uh, shows you basically what you need to do to create an OK game. So you're going to need you're going to need three files at a minimum. You're going to need the plugin, which is going to return the, the the class which implements your game, which is an arcade machine, and a class that implements the rendering of your arcade machine and then just a method that, that returns a string which is the name of your arcade machine that's the name that is shown yeah but when they when they select your your game there that's that my test mod arcade game that text there that's coming from here. And you're going to need to implement the actual game class, which just which just overrides. And here it's uh, subclasses arcade machine. Fairly simple, and then a renderer. And then your plugin provider needs to pass an instance of this type, this plugin, RK plugin type, needs to pass a reference to it there. And your main mod plugin, so you're going to need it. So even if you're only implementing 
an arcade game you still need to implement one of these because that needs to register the number of arcade machines you're implementing which in this case is just one but if you would implement two different games you'd make that two and you'd have a different class here for each one and this method here so say let's say you you um, let's say you implemented two games when your plugin is called the game passes the game ID which will be one for the first one and two for the second one I think or zero for the first one and one for the second one so based on that you then return the correct object object here so you might have my test mod arcade which is the first one and you might have total defender which is the second one so if then you return that else you return whatever your second one is okay and you do the same with the renderer and the same with the name so that's a, that's the number of the game that that it's asking you to um, get, get the types for all right hope that helps good luck